Are you stressing out about your radio communication? Have you ever keyed the mic and instantly regretted what came out of your mouth? You're not alone. Radio work can be one of the most stressful parts of flying for both student and experienced pilots. In this video, I'm going to walk you through non-towered radio communication in a way that finally makes it click with clear examples, simple rules, and zero overthinking. This video will have you sounding confident, calm, and professional every time you key the microphone. Let's start with a few essential do's and don'ts. Unlike at towered airports where you must talk to air traffic control, non-towered communication is highly recommended but not required. And that's exactly why some pilots avoid it, because technically, they can. The FAA recognizes that some aircraft don't have electrical systems or radios, so you will always need to be watching for other traffic. However, listening for other aircraft and self-announcing your location and intentions adds an extra layer of protection. In fact, AIM-419 makes it crystal clear that for maximum safety, all radio-equipped aircraft should be monitoring and communicating using the published CTAP. They also offer some simple but powerful guidance. One, listen before transmitting. Two, plan what you'll say before keying the mic. Three, speak slowly and clearly. And four, keep transmissions brief, especially when the pattern is busy. Just remember that all radio communication happens in a shared space. Everyone can listen, but only one person can talk at a time. So your goal should be simple. Say what you need to say, then get off the mic so the next person can speak. So, when should you make radio calls to announce your position? The AIM lists six recommended times. About 10 miles out from an airport, downwind, base, final, leaving a runway, and when taxiing to a runway. I'd also strongly recommend calling out runway crossings while taxiing. Not every airport has good visibility at intersection points, and a simple call out can prevent a runway incursion. Oh, and one more note. If you're unclear about another pilot's position or intention, ask. Clarifying is always safer than guessing. There are also a few things the FAA recommends you do not do. These can be found in both the FAR AIM and Aviation Circular 90-66. Don't say, traffic in the area, please advise. Don't use CTAF, Unicom, or Multicom for casual conversations. They are intended for business use only. Don't key the mic and then think about what to say. Think about it before you key the mic. Don't assign yourself a landing sequence. And I'll add, if you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Mistakes happen to everyone. Just note the mistake, figure out what you should have said, and then do better next time. So far, we've talked about do's and don'ts. Now, let's jump into some examples. To help, let's imagine that we're making a flight from Austin Municipal Airport, KAUM, to Mason City Municipal Airport, KMCW, and we're planning on cruising at 4,500 feet MSL. When beginning our trip at Austin, per FAA guidance, we should start by announcing our taxi to the runway. This should sound like the following. Austin traffic, Archer 12345, taxiing from the ramp to runway 17 for departure to the southwest, Austin. Notice that we open and close with the airport name. This is especially important on frequencies like 122.9, where multiple airports share the channel. Once we're ready to depart and we've checked to make sure other aircraft aren't on short final, we should again announce our intention. Austin traffic, Archer 12345 entering runway 17, departing to the southwest, climbing to 4,500 feet, Austin. If you're staying in the pattern, you should modify this slightly. Austin traffic, Archer 12345, entering runway 17, remaining in the pattern, Austin. Now, let's talk about our arrival at Mason City. Let's assume that we've checked the weather and winds are favoring runway 18. At 10 miles out, we should make the following call. Mason City traffic, Archer 12345, 10 miles northeast at 4,500 feet, landing runway 18, Mason City. Once we're entering the downwind, we should announce Mason City traffic, Archer 12345, entering left downwind for 18, full stop, Mason City. Now, let's talk about this call a little bit. Why should we specify left traffic? Shouldn't that be obvious based on the traffic pattern shown on the charts and in the chart supplement? Well, yes and no. While left patterns are standard, local practice or special situations, such as emergencies, can have pilots flying different patterns. 
Stating your pattern removes that ambiguity, and always adding what pattern you're flying makes it more likely you'll remember to fully announce your position if you need to fly a non-standard pattern. Now, on to the next leg. When we're on the base leg, we need to say Mason City Traffic, Archer 12345, left base, 18, full stop, Mason City. And on final, we'll say Mason City Traffic, Archer 12345, final, 18, full stop, Mason City. After we land and clear the runway, we should report Mason City Traffic, Archer 12345, clear of runway 18 at Bravo, taxiing to the ramp, Mason City. Notice we specified the runway. This is best practice. I have heard many pilots announce that they're clear of the active runway, but that isn't very helpful when there's more than one runway. Also, I'd highly recommend reporting when you cross other runways when taxiing. In our scenario, Mason City has another runway that might also be used, runway 12. Therefore, I would stop at the intersection of Bravo and runway 12, check for traffic, and add the following crossing call. Mason City traffic, Archer 12345, crossing runway 12 at Bravo, taxiing to the ramp, Mason City. And there we have it, a complete trip's worth of self-announcing radio calls. While your situations will likely be different, whether it be airports, altitudes, directions, etc., when to make your radio calls and how they're organized will be very similar. So feel free to use these examples as templates. We've reviewed the do's and don'ts and taken a look at some examples, but how do we use this information to get better on the radio? Well, here are six powerful practice techniques. First, whenever possible, listen to your local CTAF and grade what other pilots are saying. Uh, please note, do this in private rather than confronting other pilots about their radio work. Being publicly critical can make you very unpopular. Second, write out your radio scripts while you're flight planning. Third, chair fly your transmissions out loud. Fourth, record yourself chair flying and grade how well you do. Are you clear, concise, and professional? Fifth, record yourself in the airplane if you can, and review your real-world transmissions. Sixth, practice with a training partner and grade each other. Remember, radio proficiency isn't a talent most of us are born with. It's earned from lots and lots of practice. If you found this video helpful, please grab the free non-towered study guide linked in the description below. If you want to dive deeper into flight training and practical flying skills, please watch this video next. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Fly safely, and I will see you next time.